Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to go into the Creative Fabrica Designer Dashboard and I'm going to show you how to upload your store banner, your logo, and information for your store. Hi, I'm Carrie, and if you're new to this channel, I create tutorials for digital artists like you wishing to sell their work on Creative Fabrica. If that interests you, then please like and subscribe and click the notification bell so that you are notified the next time I upload my videos. So if you want to join me now and I will show you how all of this is done. All right, we're on Creative Fabrica. The first thing that I did when I was creating my store banner is that I did a little bit of research. I went to other artists here on Creative Fabrica and was looking at their store banner, their thumbnails, and how they were presenting themselves on Creative Fabrica. So as an example, we're just gonna go up to my profile, into my account, and then we're gonna go into designers I follow. And here are some of the designers that I'm following right now. I chose these designers because number one, they were creating the same types of products that I make. Plus, I was looking at their store banner and I was also looking at their thumbnails. So this video isn't about creating thumbnails, however, I can make that at a later video. So as an example, let's see, let's just go to Anna Babic. She's an amazing artist on here. So as you can see, her thumbnails are amazing. Her work is amazing. But I'm looking at her banner. So what I like about her banner is that it's very colorful, it's very eye-catching, and it shows her artistic skills that she is providing for her customers. There is nothing on here except her work and her store name. Now one thing you have to remember is that if you read through Creative Fabrica's um, uh, rules for setting up your store is that one of those rules is that you cannot, when creating your banner or your thumbnails, you cannot put any third party links or URLs on your banner or your thumbnails. There is a place for you to, to upload those. You can see those here on her store. So there is a place to upload those, but Creative Fabrica would prefer you not advertising them on your banner or your thumbnails. Actually, it's one of the regulations that uh, you're not permitted to do on Creative Fabrica. So with that being said, let's go back. And here's another one that I follow. Now, not necessarily, you know, they're, they're thumbnails are okay, but I liked their banner because their banner was clean, it was simple, and usually if it's clean and simple with very readable text, those are the banners that are going to get you noticed as well. But hey, you are the digital artist and whatever works for you. My advice is that to create a banner that doesn't look cluttered or confusing or uh, a lot of things going on in it. Here's another one that I follow and they're amazing. One thing to notice is that he doesn't even have his store name on the banner. You can also do that if you wish. So as soon as they see your banner, customers will see what kind of skills and work that you do and that they will want to click. But this is entirely up to you. You are the artist. So my advice is that before you start creating your own banner, to go through and see what other artists are doing, what catches your eye. Now, if we go to my store, just as an example, I have my logo on my store banner. However, I don't put my logo here. I put my face and I prefer it that way because for me, my store logo is already up here. Why would I have it double right here? Also, if you notice that um, I am adhering to the regulations that Creative Fabrica sets out, I have no um, uh, website links here. All I have is my logo for my store. So I'm still within those regulations. And for me, I like people seeing who I am uh, in, in my logo box here. But once again, this is completely entirely up to you. So when creating this banner, let's come up to the store and go to your dashboard. 
Okay, and to the left of your dashboard, you're going to see here store settings. And this is where you're going to upload your banner, your logo, and include your information. Let's talk about your store banner first. To create this, I went to Canva. So here is my store banner in Canva. So I made sure that my size was 1220 by 250 pixels. And as I mentioned before, I did my welcome to, I put my logo on my banner, and then I just did a uh, picture that I created for my website. I did the same background that I have on my website, and that's to keep my brand consistent for, through all my social media platforms. This is my sort of little model that I've always used on my website and also on my newsletters. A little bit of what you fancy does you good. You're the artist, you do whatever you want to do. I would just go through, see what other artists are doing, and then create your own wonderful banner. So once I have this looking the way that I want and it's wonderful, then I download it. Um, and like I said, either a JPEG or a PNG file. Then I go back to my store settings page and I upload my banner. So I'm just going to re-upload this for you. In my directory, I have my store, I have Creative Fabrica, and then I have all of my uh, files. So to keep it organized, I make a folder for store details for my Creative Fabrica. I click on that, click on my banner, and here's my banner I just downloaded. And there you go. So another thing to keep in mind with your banner is that you can change this with the seasons and many artists on Creative Fabrica do do that and it helps your customers to know that you're always changing, you're always evolving and you're always taking care of your store and looking after it. So you don't have to do uh, create a, a seasonal banner but I would suggest that um, every so often, maybe like once a year, maybe if you want to, uh, change it up and uh, add a little bit more um, pop to it and or change it completely. It, this is entirely up to you. Now, as I mentioned, my logo I do have here already on my banner, so I just find it counterintuitive to add it here as well. I like my customers seeing that there is an actual person behind the work that they are buying. And once again, you can go back into Canva and create your 500 by 500 pixels and to do it that way. I'm not really going to show you how to create a logo. I would do some research online or on Creative Fabrica and just getting ideas. So the same thing with the banner. You would just click up here. It would be a spot. You just click on that and upload it from your computer and it will come up here. Now, your personal information. So here I have my first name, my last name, and then I have my store name. And you can edit this, but it says, please note that when changing your store name, all links will be updated. This means that you will need to update links from your site, social media, etc. I would think really carefully of your store name before you start uploading it or making your banner or your logo. Really make sure that you uh, do your research, make sure that uh, no one else on Creative Fabrica or even on Google has your store name because you don't want to be taking things down and changing links and it's just going to be a hassle. I put in my personal address, you can't see that here, but uh, I put in my personal address for your social media platforms. Uh, it says go to this page and that's where you would do that. We're going to click on that. I'm going to open it in a new link. And Creative Fabrica allows you to put in your Etsy store. This is wonderful because if you do have an Etsy store, you can put that link here and then that will show up on your store page. This bio is very different than what you will see on your store. This is just you personally on here, not as a seller, but as a buyer. So scroll down and so as you can see here, enter your social media accounts here. Now, they don't have a place for you to put your personal website, but there are other hubs um, or social media accounts here that you can tell them to visit your website. I have my YouTube channel, I have my Facebook, Pinterest, I'm, I'm looking into a business account and I'm going to be putting that in here. So once all of this is here, then that kind of sets up 
or at, it, at least it's the place to go to put your social media accounts. We go back to our store settings. So this is the info. So I introduce myself, hello, my name is Carrie, and I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that, all kinds of clip art, stickers, pattern page sets, and more for your next awesome creative project. You can um, expand this as little or as much as you want. I can't really say what works and what doesn't because it's not necessarily the description that brings customers to your store. It's your work, it's your banner, it's what you do. As soon as they follow you, when you upload your next project, they're, they're notified. If they're following you, all of your followers will get that instant email from Creative Fabrica telling them that, hey, you have a new product on your store. I wouldn't go too much detail in with this. I would introduce yourself and what who you are, maybe where you're from, but especially what you do on your store, what products you create. I think that's important, but I wouldn't go really crazy with this. Here is your email settings. That is completely entirely up to you. Company data. So I haven't filled any of these fields out for my store. Right now, I'm not too, too worried about this. If you want to fill this in, go ahead, completely up to you, but I just haven't done mine yet. So after all of these things on your store settings page has been completed, make sure you click the update. Then just go back to your store and then you can see your about logo and your banner. Thank you for joining me today. Hope this was of interest to you and it helped you a little bit and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.